Okay, so let's uh, take another look here at uh, what you could do with arrays just as a basic of uh, introducing it to Greenfoot. It's another thing that a lot of people tried to do the first time around, but just didn't have a way of describing it, it which is how do you manage an animation? Um, and a lot of the, the ways that it was done was to use this giant if-else statement. So for example, if there were 20 frames in your animation, um, you would have had 20 if-else statements that controlled where it was in its animation. Now, along the same lines of thinking about your array as a, a film strip, that's how we can manage an animation with a loop and not have to continually go if else with all these different frames. So I'm going to show you uh, one possible way of doing this um, with an array and I'll grab a, a background here. And the actor that I'm going to look for here I've actually uh, got one on the desktop. So I'll show you how I go and find an animation because it's probably a feature that you will be interested in using yourself. Uh, and the easy one that I was looking for was an explosion. So one of the options that you can use where it says any type down here is animated. So you can pick an animated um, image search when you do that in Google. That way, if you're looking for something which would be good to animate, then that would save you a tremendous amount of work as far as uh, the artistic work goes. Um, so uh, when we pick up the image, I've grabbed one of these images here. Uh, I took this one out. And then the problem is it's all stored in one animation right now. So if you look at what this picture is going to do, I will show you. It's, it's this explosion here. Um, it's a little bigger than that, but uh, yeah, it's this one. It's going to do this explosion, and that's what I'm going to manipulate with you. So the problem is being in one file, I can't manipulate that file. So instead, what I'm going to have you do is go and split these into frames. So I found a little website here. You can use it. Um, I believe it's just if you go to easygif.com and split, then it'll ask for uh, you to upload the file. So if I do the one that I just got off of Google, you can do this in Photoshop too, by the way. However, Photoshop is super powerful. It's not necessary for this. Um, so I'll upload that image. And then once it's uploaded, it'll ask me about uh, splitting it. So that's what I'll do here is I'll split it. So now that I have all the individual frames, that'll give me control over how the animation runs. So I'll download them as a zip file. And I'm going to save this on my desktop. Oops. And I already have a folder there. So let's call it um, Explosion Frames. So we can't do a whole lot with the uh, zip file. So instead, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to rename this, or sorry, extract them all. And I'll just call this the frames that I want. So I've already done that just to save us a bit of time. But once you've extracted those files, again, you're going to want to go and take them and stick them in where your um, project folder was. Now, no matter what utility that you use when you split your animation, um, the thing that you want is some sort of numbering system here, like 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. That's going to make it easy for us to loop through them, which is why I like that uh, website for now. So I'm going to go to my project folder. And in the images, I will put those frames. So. Here I'm going to call this the explosion. And now I'll show you how to use the array to build it. We could do something general purpose, but again, this is just to introduce you to the idea and let you uh, improve it. So my explosion. Um, this uses the files that I just downloaded. So I'll go back and show them to you. Here they are. 0 through 5, which is 6 of them. So in my code, I'm going to want an array which holds 6 images. Okay. 
And since there's six of them, I'm going to use an array to do this. And we also want to keep track of where we are at in that uh, film. So here I'm going to make images, a new Greenfoot image. Oops. Greenfoot image array. And I want uh, six of them. So I am hard coding this to the animation that I downloaded. It's possible to make immense improvements here. It's even possible to scan the directory at runtime to pull up all the files rather than hard code them in. Um, but anyway, this is a, a good beginning. So when it starts, I've got the image uh, array and I've got my starting position at zero. Now, there is nothing in this array though. All I've done is put space aside. So let's go fill that array up now. So I'm gonna say four int n equals zero, while n is less than the image's length. We'll go to the next array. All I'm gonna do is manipulate the pattern that's in this uh, set of images. So frame underscore, zero, 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 and then I've got um, a GIF image. So it's gonna be a .gif file. If you're not sure how to dig it up, you can always look at your properties. So here is the uh, file type, .gif. So in this, all I'm gonna say is that wherever you're looking right now in the images, that's this spot. Please stick in a new green foot image, and I'm gonna give you the location. I don't need to source out the path because it's in my images folder. So all I need to do here is use that frame zero zero and n and then i'm going to put dot gif as my extension so what this does now is it takes every one of those images and it preloads them into that array with this loop and because of the way it was named i can manipulate it all with one loop instead of having to do each one one at a time so now whenever it acts, what I'm going to ask it to do is set the image to the one I'm currently on and then go to the next. So set image to be images index there. And then go to the next one in our film strip. So of course I'm going to go out of bounds here. And again, we had uh, talked about it previously. So what I'll do is I will use the image's length to keep it on the right track using its remainder. That'll keep it from 0 to 5. Since the length is 6, all of the possible remainders are from 0 to 5. So what this will do is run through that animation. However, right now you may not like that speed. So that's the last thing I'll add to it with you. But let's uh, I'll compile it and stick it in the world. And now when I call act, there's the first explosion. And every time I call act, a new part of the explosion happens. Okay. Uh, the background here isn't transparent. That's why you've got that box. That's something, again, we've talked about previously, which uh, we could do. But that is really fast. It's probably not the kind of explosion you were hoping for. So it is possible to slow this down. And I'll give you that last tip as a, uh, um, you know, another feature you could use to improve it. So I'll put my skip count here. And I'll start my skip count at zero. And all I'm going to do is say, I would only like this to happen. Let's say, I don't know, maybe that was five times as fast as I wanted it to go. So I'll make it run every fifth frame to slow it down. So instead of every possible act method, I would only like it to happen every fifth act. So one way I can do that is say if skip count modulus um, 5 is 0, then perform the animation. Next frame. 
And we'll keep incrementing this skip count so that it goes to the next slot each time. So this is going to slow things down for me. It's going to do this every five frames, so I should get something happening at a fifth of the original speed. I'll put it in here. And now when I run it, it's slower. You still might not be happy with it, but it's possible to do some changes. So hopefully when you see what I've done, you're already thinking of the stuff you would fix to make this better, because I'm not particularly happy with this. Um, I would probably also have something here like a private int skip speed, uh, something that keeps track of my animation uh, speed. And then in here, I wouldn't have to hard code this. I could go skip speed. And then I'll just give myself one mechanism for changing the speed. In here, I would go private void set um, animation speed. Sorry, that needs to be public, of course, or we won't be able to get it. And all that'll do is change my skip speed Oops, to be an S, the one they gave me. So that way, I don't have to always recompile my code. It's very general purpose. Now, if I don't like how it's working with this default of 5, I can run it. And then I might say to myself, I'd still like to slow it down a bit more. So I'm going to change the speed. Maybe I'll change it to 8. Now when I run it, it's even slower. Maybe it's too slow, but again, at least I have that mechanism now built into it without having to recompile every time. So uh, this is your alternate arrays assignment, is to use files in an animation, something which you can add a feature to a game. Maybe you've already created it, that's fine. Or maybe you're going to do it in isolation to demonstrate something here. It could be some character doing silly dance moves, depending on which keyboard key you touch. It could be somebody doing like karate moves. Uh, anything you like to demonstrate the animation skill and controlling it here with your uh, array. Um, a couple other things which would be good as generic things. Um, it would be good if I had a mechanism to pause this animation. It would be good if I had a mechanism to rewind this animation. Um, so I'll show you the rewind. You can think about how to add pause. So think about it in your head. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, if you think it's very, very easy to rewind this animation, you're correct. Think about what code I would need to do that to reset this animation to the beginning, like rewind it. So all you're going to need to do, and if you were right, you just have to set the index back to zero. That would take the animation back to the beginning so you could start it again. If you wanted to pause the animation, uh, that's another possible feature you could add in here as well. And uh, you could even do crazy things like instead of incrementing the count, you could make it run backwards. You know, you could have a different direction for uh, what it's doing in the array. That's up to you what features you want to add.